The Biden administration is facing backlash over how he's handling the Israel-Hamas war. Here to discuss this further is the national president of the Zionist Organization of America, Mort Klein. Thank you for joining us. Good to be with you. This week, the U.S. abstained from a U.N. Security Council resolution, which members voted to demand an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. This led to, at the time, Israel's delegation wanting to snub a trip to D.C., but they have since reversed course. But how does that vote impact U.S.-Israeli relations? This is an astonishing vote, an astonishing anti-Israel vote. This vote supports the Hamas Nazi terrorists who are trying to destroy Israel and murder as many Jews as they can. This vote is calling for a ceasefire unilaterally, with no conditions, to, which will allow Hamas to regroup and rearm uh, to fight uh, even uh, better in the future. Uh, this is, uh, <laughs> it is clear now that this administration is intentionally hostile to the Jewish state of Israel. This is not foolishness, this is not naivete, this is not stupidity. This administration clearly wants to harm Israel and, and diminish Israel. The proof of that is, They've been funding Iran, who calls for Israel's destruction, to the tune of $26 billion we've given them in the last two months. Every appointment that uh, Biden uh, has made that affects Israel is someone hostile to Israel. Uh, and he keeps calling for a Palestinian state, which will be a terrorist state. Israel's given away all of Gaza. That's a small state. And what they've gotten is a Hamas Nazi regime with 30,000 rockets that have come to Israel and a massacre. Why do we want to give them a larger state so they have even more power to harm Israel? So this is intentionally to harm Israel, and they're defending and supporting a Hamas Nazi-like terrorist group. It is just astonishing. And we need more people to speak out against this administration's actions. This is not only bad for Israel, this is terrible for America and the world, because the Hamas leaders have publicly said, first, we're going to kill all the Jews. Next, we're going to kill all the despicable Christians and the non-Muslims. This was stated by the co-founder of Hamas, Mohammed al-Zahar. Absolutely. And to your point, anti-Semitism has been on the rise for years, but even more so after the October 7th terrorist attacks against Israel. In addition, you have a younger generation using TikTok and other social media platforms spreading misinformation about the Israel-Hamas conflict and spewing hate. How is the Zionist Organization of America trying to combat anti-Semitism, and what would you tell those who support the Free Palestine Movement? First of all, Gaza, which was the, the small Palestinian regime in Gaza, is free. There's no Jews there, no, no, no Israeli uh, uh, military there, and look what they did with it. They built underground tunnels and, uh, and, and, and brought in weapons, heavy weapons from Iran, and did nothing to help their people. So <laughs> what we are doing at ZOA is we're speaking out all over the country, writing articles, sending out literature, making it clear about the lies that the kids are promoting because they don't know what the facts are. We're making it clear there is no occupation. This was never Arab land, this land of Judea and Samaria and Gaza. There was never a country called Palestine. There was no Palestinian kings and queens. This was Israeli land under international law and under the biblical law. We also want to make it clear that Jerusalem has never been holy to Muslims. So when they scream, we want Jerusalem as the capital of, 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 uh, of, of a Palestinian state, Jerusalem is never even mentioned in their holy book, the Koran. It is not holy to them. We're making it clear that Mahmoud Abbas, the Palestinian Authority president, is a vicious, monstrous killer. He pays Arabs lifetime pensions to murder Jews. Do you hear what I just said? He pays Arabs lifetime pensions to murder Jews. He spends $400 million a year doing this. He names schools, streets, sports teams, children's camps after Jew killers, glorifying Jew killers, having parades for them when they die. And he puts out posters all over the Palestinian Authority schools and universities with their pictures and calling them heroes. So we're trying to make more people understand Israel's dealing with a Nazi-like terrorist regime. This is not a group of innocent people. By the way, the Gaza Palestinians and the Palestinian Arabs in Judea and Samaria, both of them in their own polls, 85% of them support Hamas, 90% of them support what Hamas did on October 7th, massacring 1,200 Jews and taking 250 
Jews and six Americans hostage. So we're trying simply to educate uh, uh, the, the, camp, the people on campuses and the country, make them understand the truth of the Arab Islamic war against Israel and the Jews and America, I might add. Iran, which is now funding Hamas and, and Hezbollah and other terrorist groups, on their missiles, they have the line, death to America as well as death to Israel. They're coming after America. We have to stop them from getting nuclear weapons. And this administration has not done the job. We have to complain bitterly about this. And to your point, like you said, there are literally bounties for uh, that the Palestinian Authority has offered to those who kill Jews in Israel. And Israel is the only democracy in the Middle East. Now, just a couple of weeks ago, the Zionist Organization of America hosted a Heroes for Israel gala honoring Representatives Elise Stefanik, Brian Mast, and other leaders who have been steadfast supporters of Israel. What was that event like this year in the face of everything that's been happening in Israel? It was oversold. We had overwhelming uh, support for this gala. People wanted to be there, uh, uh, to be there with two of the great uh, patriots and uh, Israel supporters. Elise Stefanik, as you know, is the woman who questioned the three. Uh, presidents of Penn, MIT, uh, uh, and uh, Harvard, uh, asking them, uh, is it against their policy to call for the murder of every Jew for genocide? Uh, uh, almost a nonsensical question. And they said it depends on the context. She exposed the fact that you have three hostile to Jews, Jewish presidents, and uh, two of them have already been fired. There's only one left. So we honored her for her fabulous work and her commitment to strong U.S. Israel relations. And Brian Mass, who's a war hero, who uh, 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 did several duties in Iraq and uh, uh, also was fighting hard to make it clear to members of Congress and America that a Palestinian state would be, just simply be another Palestinian terrorist state. Every speaker got standing ovations, huge response. And I must also add uh, the, the, the fabulous Dr. Miri Adelson, uh, wife of the late Sheldon Adelson, one of the great philanthropists in the world, was also there giving the award out to uh, 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 Congresswoman Stefanik. So it was an extraordinary event, constant standing ovations. People told me when they were leaving, they were so inspired to now fight for strong U.S. relations and more importantly, fight for the truth of the Arab Islamic war against Israel and the West and make it clear there's never been a Palestinian state. And by the way, we, the speakers made it clear that Israel has offered a Palestinian state four times in the last 20 years. They've turned it down every time because it means they have to sign a letter that says we accept Israel as a Jewish state. They've told Israel we will not sign any agreement that says we accept Israel as a Jewish state. So they've turned down the state four times in the last 20 years. I might add eight times in the last 80 years, starting with the Peel Commission in 1937. They could have had a state then on 95 percent of, of the land that's disputed and they turned it down as well. The goal of the Palestinian Authority is clear. It is not a Palestinian state, it's not more land, it's Israel's destruction and to Islamicize the world and establish an international Islamic caliphate. And to your point, Representative Ryan Mass, not only has he served in the US military, but he also served in the IDF. And I also wanna talk about how the relations between U.S. and Israel, how, the, how they changed dramatically over the past few years. Under Trump, you had the historic Abraham Accords where he was trying to achieve peace between Israel and some of these Arab nations such as Morocco, such as, such as Jordan, Bahrain, etc. Uh, and now you have President Biden who is constantly being heckled every time he goes to a campaign rally by by the Free Palestine Movement. And just a few days ago, he even he even said to the to those who were demonstrating at a campaign event, you know what, they have a point. So what does this how do you expect this will turn out to be in this presidential election year where it seems as though he's he's facing pressure from both sides, some of them saying he needs to be he needs to defend Israel more. But then you have the far left saying he needs to uh, call on a ceasefire. How do you expect uh, that this will uh, impact the election this year? <laughs> Since Biden became president of the United States, he showed immediately his intentional hostility to the Jewish state. Every person he appointed uh, that, uh, that affects Israel 
is someone hostile to Israel, and by the way, a close friend of Barack Hussein Obama. These are Obama's friends, Obama's appointments. He does what Obama uh, tells him to do. And, uh, uh, and, and so immediately we saw this, the hostility to Israel intentional by these appointments. Uh, we also uh, saw him uh, trying to make a deal with Iran and funding Iran. We've given Iran $26 billion. Iran was on its back under the Trump administration. They were down to $4 billion in reserves. They couldn't function. And now, uh, since uh, Biden has come in, he's ignored all the sanctions that Trump put into place, uh, uh, which made it impossible for Iran to sell oil and other products to the world, uh, causing them to go broke. But uh, Biden has ignored the sanctions, and now Iran has gone from $4 billion in, deserve, in reserves to $100 billion in reserves. And Iran is the biggest funder of Islamic terrorism in the world. They fund Hamas, Islamic Jihad, uh, Hezbollah, the Houthis. And uh, uh, people have to begin to understand, this is not pressure from the far left. Uh, this is Obama and Biden's own interest intentionally to harm Israel, to diminish Israel, and, and far worse. So uh, it's high time that, that uh, people in America who care about strong users of relations, who care about a human rights-loving democracy in the Middle East, the only one, Israel, uh, should be speaking out uh, and demanding that Biden change his policies because they've been awful for Israel and awful for America. And again, I want to point out, this is intentional. It's not because of pressure from the left. This is what Biden has wanted to do from day one. Absolutely. And lastly, where can our viewers go to learn more about the Zionist Organization of America? Thank you. They can go to zoa.org, zoa.org. <laughs> Much of what I said and more is on that website. We put new material out every single day to learn the truth uh, about these issues. Because if you read uh, the New York Times and the Washington Post and the LA Times, you're not going to learn the, the, the facts of the issues. Uh, they are extraordinarily biased against Israel, as is most of the media in the world. And so I urge them to go on our website, zoa.org, and, uh, and uh, you'll, you'll learn uh, the facts that need to be understood to make wise decisions about your own thoughts. Again, President of the Zionist Organization of America, Mort Klein, thank you so much again for your time. Thank you for uh, having me here, and thank you for the great work that one uh, America uh, does in all the issues, really enlightening the people like all, virtually no other media. Thank you. Thank you. For all our viewers asking where One America News is heading in the future, we would like to introduce you to OAN Live. OAN Live is the best way to stay up to date on all of the hard-hitting, straight-shooting, national and international headlines. And the best part is, OAN Live is only $4.99 per month. All the credible, honest, unbiased reporting One America News offers at a fraction of the cost of cable. Just go to OANN.com to easily sign up for OAN Live and stay informed.